Rick Gratz stood among a small group of students atop the Continental Divide, explaining the intricacies of overthrust geology in Glacier National Park. Swaths of rain blew quickly overhead, parting to reveal the sun, while small avalanches fell from the high crevasses. Fresh snow dusted the nearby peaks, and skiers and snowboarders hiked past our group for some June tracks. Even with distractions like these in a magnificent alpine setting, Gratz was able to keep his students focused. This alpine classroom was part of the University of Montana's Crown of the Continent Initiative, an educational program that brings together the work of scientists, biologists, and researchers who are studying the ecosystem known as the Crown of the Continent. The fact that we have so many people doing science in this area, whether it's in water, issues like we talked about yesterday, to, to grizzly bears and wildlife and glaciers, it's just that we have so many people working in it that we have a good understanding of it that we, we are really the umbrella organization, really. There are a lot of groups doing work in the Crown. Many organizations, but they have their little pieces of it. We look at being an organization that puts the umbrella over it, brings it together, and gets it out to the public. It's up to people like Candy Merrill to help get that information to students and alumni. It's not just a guided tour. We're out here actually learning in the morning, sitting in the classroom, getting the information, and then in the afternoon, we're out here with the scientists who study this stuff, and they're able to actually point to examples of it and say, here, this is, this is an example of what we were talking about this morning. So it's pretty thrilling. We go away feeling like, okay, next time I'm out hiking, I'm gonna recognize these features in the landscape myself, and I'll feel like I know a little bit more about why they're there. This immense ecosystem stretches from Missoula in the south to Jaffrey Mountain, British Columbia in the north. The crown reaches east to the Rocky Mountain front and west to the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness near Libby. The crown ecosystem comprises some of the world's most intact species of plants and animals and is a living classroom of the people who live among them. I've learned that there's an awful lot of work in the crown going on. There's a lot of great research and projects that the public doesn't even know about that they need to and want to and a lot of these scientists are just doing their own thing and we're uh, and that's okay because that's the way it is but we we want to take it uh, and bring it to the public and I just learned how many fun projects there are that are just great for the public. In addition to its 300 level geography class, the Crown of the Continent Initiative works with nonprofit organizations such as the Glacier Institute to present classes to the public as they did this June when several UM alumni and others participated in a class at Big Creek Outdoor Education Center. Rick offers these great courses all up and down the Rocky Mountain front talking about geology, geography, glaciology and he seems to know everybody in Montana so he brings all these great experts in to speak on land use issues, forest management, wildlife, uh, watershed, water biology, fisheries, just it, the, the, everything about the entire ecosystem. Uh, the climate, climate change, weather, and we're just combining these, creating these, these package courses that are just enough information for the public to know so they really go away feeling like they've learned some great information. Bob Simonson, who graduated from the University of Montana in 1977, took a three-day version of the class and celebrated his birthday atop the Continental Divide along with other classmates. Initially heard about this trip via an email from the university and I kind of ignored it at first, put it aside, because uh, this yesterday was my birthday, and I thought we were gonna do other things, but the more I thought about it, I thought, this is the perfect way to spend my birthday, and I read the itinerary, and it made it even more like, this is what I wanna do. Uh, this has been a wonderful experience. Uh, I've learned a lot, I've met a lot of fun and interesting people, um, got some good hikes in, uh, it's, it's, something I would recommend to anybody. It's a unique experience. Well, I've never been much of a geologist. If you would have asked me a few days ago, I would have said, you know, it's kind of a boring topic, but I tell you that the speakers that have come in to educate us have been more than interesting. They're very knowledgeable scientists. 
Um, the terrain, I'm, I'm looking at these mountains right now and seeing things I've never seen. And I've been to Glacier Park for over 50 years coming and going. And, Today I see things that, and understand what they are like I've never done before. I'm a more educated, knowledgeable person now than I was <laughs> 48 hours ago even. Gratz is also working in and around Yellowstone National Park to tie in that area to the Crown of the Continent initiative. It's, it's really getting to be a big program and we wanted to be part of a mountain study center at the university eventually. And that's why we're also working in Yellowstone. Same pattern in Yellowstone, except it's more complex uh, it has more dynamics in it than the, the, the crown is a nice package of 83% protection by statue in both nations. It's a, you know, it's a transboundary one, whereas Yellowstone, it's sort of fragmented, but it's a great ecosystem also, and they're not separated by more than 160 kilometers. I think the combinations of things are really exciting. Um, it's good to, to learn about the climate, the geography of the state that we live in, all the science that's happening here, but there are a lot of writers, poets, and musicians, and um, just a lot of really great stuff happening. And I think it, it's, it's really exciting to combine topics where you're, you're talking about this great environment, this beautiful glacier park, and then bring in a writer who's maybe written a novel based in this area or written poetry about it. Um, just so that our participants go away feeling like they've had this great breadth of, of experience. The Crown of the Continent has a history of collaboration dating back to when noted conservationist George Bird Grinnell first coined this term in 1901. Gratz hopes to continue that important work. The exciting part is to look back on the history of collaboration in the Crown, why it is the way it is, because so many people work together uh, to make it happen. Uh, put their shoulders as a wheel. I'm talking about every political persuasion, every interest. I mean, that's what's so unique. And I just love hearing the stories of how people work together for it. And still are today. There is a lot of stress on, on, on open space and wild country. And, uh, and there's also a need for people to work. And so finding ways for people to collaborate where you can have sustainable development, at the same time preserving wild areas and that is open space that's not trammeled. Uh, it's important, more so than ever, we're losing the space. I believe that's the university's role. It's, we discover things, we, we uh, uncover things that not a lot of people know. We don't really discover, it's there. Uh, and it's our job to let folks know about it. That's our, you know, we teach, we write, we research, and so we come up with these things. And again, it's our obligation as a public university to share that with the public.